my name is Drew Gregory and I read the article concerning the patenting of indigenous DNA within the Human Genome Diversity Project. And what the Human G uh, Diversity Genome Project was, or HGDP, was a uh, project that started in 1992. And what it sought to do was collect uh, DNA from indigenous people from around the world for the Human Genome Project because their argument was that the DNA that they're collecting from was specifically from Anglo and Northern DNA samples. So what they did was they traveled around the world and collected DNA from 25 members from uh, 722 indigenous groups which totals to uh, 18,050 subjects. And there was some opposition to this in which uh, the project was actually called the Vampire Project for obvious reasons, which will become more obvious later. <laughs> and the opposition came mostly from anthropologists as well as the indigenous groups themselves. The debate over whether the HGD program was moral began with the uh, case in northern Papua New Guinea over the Hagahai people, who were a small group of hunters and gatherers in the northern regions of a population of only uh, about 300. And this population was dramatically lowered because of uh, the introduction of upper respiratory diseases and things of this nature from uh, Western influences. And what made or what attracted scientists to this group was that most of them carried a gene that was linked to a benign form of T-cell leukemia. And scientists wanted to collect this genetic information so that they could further understand how uh, leukemia affects the human uh, immune system and you know, maybe find a, a cure. You know, very positive things. The problem begins when the U.S. government sought to patent in, on August 24, 1990, this, uh, this gene string, and they applied for the patent, and then eventually, uh, in, on March 14, 1994, they uh, successfully uh, were granted this patent. Now the problem with this is it brought about fears that many had had about this issue for a while, which was an idea of biological neocolonialism, in which a precedent had been set which objectified the primitive as an exotic and rare source of knowledge that had to be quickly tapped before it vanished. So now anthropologists uh, who were involved with the HDDP program were wrapped up in a economic and political debate. And on you know one side, people were saying that you know this is great for medicine, and on another side, they're saying that you know this has the possibility of basically turning humans further into a, a, a tappable resource to be exploited. And on the side of HDP, uh, uh, Kalivili uh, Soravas commented that critics of the project were largely cultural types were not real scientists, but more philosophers and social critics. But nonetheless, uh, to the objection, uh, patents on genes were being made because it became a very lucrative business. And on 1991, or in 1991, Craig Venture, a researcher of NIH and also part of the Human Genome Project, applied for 337 unique gene sequ sequence patents. However, his patent applications were denied. But on August, uh, or the August of 1992, uh, England's Medical Research Council filed for 1,100 gene sequences. Just how lucrative this new resource was, was became apparent in 1995 when a small island population on the island of Tristan de Chana was found to have a, gene a genetic sequence that was linked to asthma. And the licensing for this genetic data was sold for $70 million. Furthermore, a population in Micronesia on the island of Krosoi carried a gene that was linked to genetic obesity. And the licensing to this gene strain was bought by the Rockefeller University for $20 million. 
and there was also an agreement for payments later on in sums of 90 million dollars. So the question remains, should human genetics be patentable to encourage medical development or should there be a ban on patenting or in a sense owning human genetics to prevent us from going down a road of biological neocolonialism? And I leave that question to you.